Okay. I've made so many videos and it's, it's, the stuff I get into uh, just doesn't make any bit of sense for what I'm trying to, trying to communicate. Um, the main thing is, is I want to tell Ton Rosendahl, the maker of Blender, a uh, uh, guy I know, he knows me. He, uh, and if he doesn't know me, he's got uh, some sort of brain ailment that he somehow has forgotten me. Um, but he does. And um, Ton, I told you Blender would be the atomic bomb and it would explode and it would change the industry. And 25 years later, um, look at it now. Is it not what I said it was going to be? Um, yes. Great. You're still dealing with a two-dimensional interface. You're mousing it. Maybe you have a space ball or something. Maybe you have some mocap. Uh, maybe a VR headset uh, suit or something. I came to the realization this whole VR technology that everybody is uh, is uh, embracing or hopefully will be embracing. I've already got mine. I got this right here. This guy right here is called an Oculus Go. Um, Marcus Zuckerberg, you know him from uh, Facebook. He owns Oculus. Oculus put out these suckers for $200. They're fantastic. They've got um, three degrees of freedom on the headset and on the controller. Here's the controller. Now, what's a degree of freedom? A degree of freedom is um, what they refer to as axes. Um, in 3D space, you have, uh, let me turn this sucker off. I don't know if you want to turn it off. A, a degree of freedom, uh, what they're really talking about is they're talking about axes. Your left and your right is your X. Your up and your down is your Y. Your in your out is your Z. X, Y, Z. Three dimensions, three axes, one dimension, one, two dimensions in a plane, three dimensions everywhere. That's three dimensions. Uh, what they talk about three, uh, and when they talk about three degrees of freedom, they mean usually um, either rotational or translational. Translational is moving back and forth or around or in, up here. That's translational, moving in space. Okay, that's translational, uh, trans, translation uh, or trans, transition, translation. They call it translation. Um, transformation is something else. Um, I'll talk about the di different. Rotational. Rotational and translation. Rotation around an axis. This is me rotating around the x-axis. This is me rotating around the y-axis. This is me rotating around the z-axis. You need those three together to describe any rotation of an object in 3D space. So whether I hold it this way or that way, this is a three degrees of freedom of rotational space, but I am only expressing one uh, set of uh, degrees of freedom, three degrees of freedom. There's another three degrees of freedom. That's th the freedom to put it over here, up here, down here, up there. And so you also have your rotation and you have your placement. Those th all those things together, you need six degrees of freedom to um, describe placement of anything in a 3D universe. And so six degrees of freedom is what you need. These only have three degrees of freedom. Your headset is is in a fixed place in space. Uh, in It's on your head and your head rotates like this, like that, and you can look up and you can look down and you can look over that's rotational three degrees of freedom this is rotational it does you can't move it forward or backward you can't move it up to the left or the right i mean you can do it in 3d space here in reality but inside the interface um it only 
recognizes that you're rotating it. So it only gives you three degrees of freedom. So does the headset. Um, great. Enter in uh, Oculus Quest coming out in four months. Um, uh, it's going to be $400. It'll have two handsets, each with six DOF, six degrees of freedom. Six degrees of freedom. You've got rotational, uh, you've got yourself just enough to do an upper body actor. The headset, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be six DOF. I think it's going to be three DOF. And it's just going to be rotational. It might be um, with respect to the to the hands, it could be considered to be uh, to have another three degrees of freedom trans transitional translationally, but um, that would be respect with respect to that. And how can you tell the difference between this and uh, and that? And how is that different from this? There's no difference. So really, only these are the only things that have the six off. The headset doesn't. Um, unless for somehow uh, some and so, somehow they they're able to detect where your head is in 3D space, um, so how far it is from one wall or another wall, that might give you another three degrees of freedom on the headset. But you're essentially a marionette. You're um, an upper part of a marionette. You're a puppet. Um, you are a puppeteer. You are a upper body actor. Um, and to have the lower body doesn't require any rocket science. It's just a rigged uh, auto walking feature. It's got, uh, it can be programmed, the bottom half of your actor can be programmed to do anything you need to do. Um, and that actor could probably just hit little points in space and say, this is what my legs are doing. Or, the, or have another headset on his waist and have uh, uh, put the, those things down there on his on his feet, and then he has six stuff up here and six stuff down there, and or you could have a connect camera, which would make it easier. Uh, connect Xbox Connect, looking at you and seeing where you're placing your limbs, and uh, there are all sorts of people in. Uh, there's this this app called and it's Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft bought it up. I don't know what Microsoft is going to do to pervert it, because um, they always pervert. That's that's Microsoft. Um, we'll see what they do to pervert it. Um, hopefully they don't pervert it. Hopefully they leave it the way it is and let it develop it in the in the sense of the of the Xerox Park that inspired the Macintosh and the Windows. So. Um, So, VR is the future, um, and I'll tell you why. Um, and you, ton, are using a two-dimensional interface to describe a three-dimensional universe. Wouldn't you rather be in a three-dimensional universe just working with a three-dimensional universe? I would. I would rather model in VR. I, 2D modeling just doesn't make any sense. So we need to be working in VR with our models. Um, so we need to get this Oculus thing going. You need to uh, somehow create a head that um, works on the Oculus. I know it's probably closed source and you're not about that, but you could make it into a controller and then you could abstract away from the controller and put into open source um, into your software uh, an abstraction by which any VR controller could be brought in and used. So it could be Oculus Vive or any of these other guys or the Google Dream or whatever, you know, any, any or, or Xbox mocap or you know, who, who, who's what's it's bring it in and be able to use it in Blender. I don't even know if it's in your Blender, but I'm saying I just got this and I am impressed with it. I've been using it for a month, and I see it as the future of cinematography. 
I know something about 3D stereo imagery. I took, uh, whenever I was in my 30s, I took about 10,000 photos in, in stereo images. I just, just taking the digital camera, I took the pictures, two pictures, and then I would combine them inside of a, a stereo a anaglyph uh, program that would turn two images into stereo imagery. And uh, I have the ability with my eyes, and you can see this with my eyes, watch. Do you know anybody that can do that? Look at it again. I'll take my glass off. I'll look at you straight. See, I'm looking at that. Because I can do that with my eyes, I can layer images of two monitors this far apart on top of each other. So I have the ability to see 3D imagery without a headset. I have been for a long time. So I know of enough about stereo imagery that some cinematographers don't even know, or the, the cinematographers, after they have been introduced to it, come to the realization they can't use telephoto lenses. And knowing what I know of filmography, um, of or, uh, cinematography, of the, the um, area of being able to, of doing uh, imagery in, in, a, in a reality uh, with a telephoto lens, it's great for 2D, but for 3D, you can't do it because you need to have enough distance. The only way you could do it, um, a t telephoto, is if you were driving a car and going a, a constant amount of speed or whatever, and you had a telephoto lens out your window and you were hoping that the content on the other end would stand still. And uh, as you were going by it, you could, you could do a telephoto 3D effect. But um, having a still camera doing telephoto, you can't do that. In, in stereo images, what it does is it produces these, this effect that the thing that you're taking a, a 3D uh, stereo image of is flat. It looks like it's a, a paper cutout. Everything in telephoto, that's how you know it's been done with a telephoto lens on a stereo setup. Um, so you can't use telephoto lenses. Well, and uh, with 180 degrees uh, freedom, or no, 180 degree uh, surround stereo, a VR 180 setup, you can't really hide your camera crew behind you. So, um, and so the actor, and, and when you cut, do cuts between uh, your, your videos, um, you have to do a lot of asset management because if anything is out of place, the viewer is gonna know it because they can see everything. It's like, um, they can see all stuff in the corner. They can see where somebody's laying their foot that's in the camera crew. So this scares the crap out of cinematographers because they can't touch it with a 10 foot pole. They don't want, and so therefore they will never work with it unless somehow they become VR um, cinematographers. They become 3D animators. Um, and they won't be able to do it with it in the reality. And only the only people that make any sense to work with VR um, cameras uh, are stunt people. Are are you and me? Are, um, are it's about it's about the real people. The actors don't matter anymore. Um, the the actors in VR. We are all actors in VR. But in uh, VR 180 and 360 uh, cameras, in, in reality, um, you're only as good as you are as an individual. Um, and your news, your truth, is only as good as you're not cutting your video. If you cut it, then it loses its context 
and it's it's you can manipulate a lot of context uh, time uh, manipulating the context of time an example uh, Michael Moore comes into a bank says that I can buy a shotgun in a bank um, uh, by just opening up an account they'll give me a shotgun he did this in uh, Bowling for Columbine. It actually took him two weeks to get the shotgun, but he didn't want to present that inside of his movie. He wanted to present it that he got it the same day. So he just didn't say that he got it the same day. He left that up to you to interpret based upon him cutting um, between those, those contexts. And you draw the relationship between the context. Uh, I took a course in Gorilla Video, and this is, Gorilla Video is all about manipulating context. It's about um, overlaying audio context, overlaying uh, video context, um, coming up with a way of making you think that certain things are related whenever they're not. And by through that, being able to um, being able to um, put in your mind an idea that never existed, okay, that wasn't real. It's a way of lying to you. That's manipulation of context. And they teach it in guerrilla video in any college course you can take it. And you will learn how to manipulate context. Um, in VR, you can't manipulate context. Um, it's difficult. Um, you could in 2D, you can't do it in 3D. This scares the shit out of every news organization, um, out of every cinematographer, because um, they could, if, if they want to tell a story, they have to, if, they, if they're going to cut, uh, if they're just telling a story, that's fine. Uh, if they're doing a news story or something like that, unless it's a continuous shot, which is boring as hell to a lot of people. In VR, it's completely interesting to have a continuous shot. Um, you don't, it's easy to keep people distracted in VR because you've got, you're not dealing with this anymore. You're dealing with everything. So everything distracts them and they will go back and look through that content multiple times because they'll know there's something there that they didn't get the first time around because they were looking over here. Okay. So just keep, keep in mind that VR, um, VR is about truth. In, in the reality is about truth. Inside of the 3D reality, the graphics, it's about manipulation. Um, but it is about storytelling. And storytelling involves some manipulation. You have to, in order to tell a story in the interest of time, you're going to have to do some manipulation, okay? Um, and it's truthful manipulation, but uh, it's manipula manipulation nonetheless. In the, the 3D reality, um, the, the manipulation of context is going to hurt you. Um, and because people are going to see through it so easy, so much easier. You can't, um, for instance, with stunt people, you can't paint over uh, guide wires anymore. Um, you could do it, but uh, in 3D stereo, your brain can see that uh, there's a part of the sky that looks kind of strange. There's a line going across that's blue, but it's it's out of it's out of it's in a three dimensional context. And it's not against a flat sky. Um, they will be able to see that. And because they can see stuff like that, because their brain is smarter than uh, uh, when it's given more imagery, the brain is smarter about what it's seeing. Um, there's nothing, uh, unless your uh, technology has artificial intelligence, there's nothing that can be done about that about the stereo imagery. And so the realm of manipulation of stereo imagery is going to be left open until there is artificial intelligence to deal with it. Because that's artificial intelligence is the only thing that's going to be able to fool the brain is something that can think just like it. 
And so for that, um, uh, it just leaves the, the only people that are really make use of the space is, space is real people doing day-to-day -day stuff, carrying a camera around with them like a GoPro. Um, whenever we're talking about cameras like this, um, that is, you are, I'm all you're going to get in this. Um, and it's like I'm sitting here, sitting here with you face to face talking. I'm sitting up really close to this camera. That's the only way you're going to see my face and see, see me interact with you. Um, and you can see my feet. I mean, if you look down, you can see my feet. You can see my toenails. You can see my shoes sitting on the ground. You can see the fan turning overhead. Uh, you can see the, the, the sofa chair over there by Fritos. Uh, you can see things twi uh, flickering. Uh, so I can't fool you. There's nothing I can fool you with. So... For those people that desire to fool you, they're fucked. And uh, um, and you got my face information, you got my facial data. You can use this information to recognize me when you see me. I come into the store, you can correlate my face with my credit account and uh, charge me instantly and not feel not have the uh, fear that you uh, incorrectly perceived me uh, because your computer recognized me off the bat, saw my face, and did the facial correlation. Um, that scares the crap out of every ID thief in the world. And so they're all going to push back on it and say, no, you don't want this. This is an invasion of privacy, blah, 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 blah. The reality is, is that um, you can put on a cell phone camera with one terabyte, you can store 20 pages of information about every person in America. It's the reality. So, um, if you think you're going to hide from the world, your, uh, face and your information and that somebody's not going to be able to dig into your personal history, you've got nothing coming. The only thing to do is to be a real person in this reality. Give up that personal, uh, uh, that that angst, or I don't know what you call it, that um, not angst, the, um, the, the need to be, um, to be private. Um, it's, as it says in the Bible, everything... Um, that is known about, you'll be sh shouted from the tops of rooftops. Um, everything kept in secret will be shouted from rooftops. That's what it says in the Bible. And uh, that's what's going to happen um, as a result of the technology. And the reality is, is that you can either be um, private or you can be truthful. And, uh, I'm not entirely truthful, but I'm here and I'm showing my face and uh, I'm presenting myself and I'm saying I'm here and, uh, you know, um, my name is Kiernan Holland and ID thieves out there, watch out. You're not, you're not me. And if you present yourself as me, everybody will know it's not you. In fact, they'll know who you are anyhow. Um, and all they need is the facial recognition. They can correlate it with, you will have to become a different kind of person in order to be an ID thief. You will have to be a person that will be forever in disguise, um, will forever uh, be unknown, will have no friends. You will have no family. You will be nothing but those people that you pretend to be. I feel sorry for you. I really do. I feel very sorry for you. 
because even though you're spending all this money or getting away with all of this, you've got a drug problem. And the drug problem is, is that you can't be you anymore. And I can be me as much as I want to. And I am me everywhere. And I have friends. And uh, I make money. And uh, I do it the right way. And you do it the wrong way. Okay. That aside. Back to ton. VR is going to be the bomb you need to stop using the 2D interface. You need to start using 3D it, as soon as possible. Microsoft is already in the sector. Facebook is already on the sector. Uh, Zuckerberg's going to make millions off of this. It's going to obliterate the iPhone, the iPad market. Uh, people are going to come to the realization that even though you're escaping reality to get into VR, in VR space, um, it forces you to be uh, social. You, uh, Facebook doesn't, doesn't even touch on the amount of social you are in VR. And um, the only person that has this space right now is owned by Microsoft, and that is Alt Space VR. They need competitors um, because I think they're complacent. Um, they're going to be complacent. They're already, uh, they don't know what to make of this, this area. They're desperate to the users to try to define to them what this VR reality is. So far, all we've got is bunches of guys in VR throwing basketballs. And I'm saying, people, is this what your time is worth? Throwing basketballs? Is this how you define your VR experience? Is this it? Talking to each other and throwing basketballs and perfecting your ability to throw basketballs and the children that come into the space so to Rick roll the 80s crowd, you know, this is the noise floor of VR. This is not VR. This is um, the, this is the, the, the junk. This is the space junk of VR, is what alt space VR is. Um, until um, people start really forming good relationships in it, um, it's going to be as such. Um, and people can block off each other and mute each other. And, that, and it's needed because if you've ever experienced alt space VR, you know that's what's going to go down. Because there are people that are in your face and they think it's funny to be in your space. Um, there, there's people that are doing all space um, understand that, uh, something about how to control this. But um, to me, that I get the feeling that these guys haven't really dealt with 3D software in the same the same realm of understanding. As you and me, Ton, they don't understand transformations. They don't understand matrix transformations. They don't understand how um, you take an object and you put it to a matrix transform. It turn it throws it into another. It projects it onto into another universe, into another uh, trans. It transforms using a uh, um, uh, homogeneous, uh, where, you know, whatever it is. I know. I remember it. It was. You had a matrix transform for one rotation and translation, another matrix transform. And if you took those all, applied them to one, you could, it's a, it was a transitive relationship of, of transformations, a transitive. Uh, a is B, B equals C, therefore A equals C. That's what the uh, matrix transforms whenever you multiply them together has that effect, is that um, if an object was parented to the parenting is the transformation the matrix transform um, that stuff that stuff we learned in OpenGL people don't know anymore they use other tools to get at that and aside from that they don't know anything 
They only know how to put, put stuff in 3D space. They don't know how it gets there. They don't know the difference between moving the, 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 the camera in 3D space and the space moving a, a, against the camera. They don't know that there is no difference between the world moving and you moving in the world and the world moving through you. It's the same thing in, in OpenGL, in 3D um, transformations. So, um, we're losing a, a, a we're losing a, a low level of intelligence, and there's a lot a high level. Uh, there's a high level language of discussion about um, the the physical, um, but there's no low, the low levels have been lost. We don't have. Um, we don't have, um, people are not concerned about details um, like they were after the, the war, war II. Um, people were about details and about designing cars and about doing things like that. We've lost those detail people. Um, and the only detail people there are are in corporations or are in open source. And open source, as you know it and I know it, is about learning uh, about how to do things on a detail level, uh, how to do it on a very low level, what we call it in computer science programming with low level language like assembly, um, getting intimate with the bits. People just do not want to do it. They want um, complete applications. They want complete. Um, they want to be uh, to be on the shoulders of others. They don't want to design stuff that's already been designed. They don't want to even know about it. And because they don't want to be, know about it, they be, then become um, imprisoned to it. They become dependent upon it, and. Um, you have to be dependent at some point, um, but uh, and but uh, because we've lost that, we need to get it back. How do we get? We get it with VR. Um, how to be a plumber? How to be an electrician? How to be um, an acrobat? How to be anything can be described in VR better than any two D information resource. And why is it not there already? Because um, consumers don't have access to it. Um, and that is now coming about. They're figuring it out. This, this is first year MTV. This is the game changer for music. Was what was, I like to think of first year MTV as the, the, way, the thing that changed the music industry for a time, and then it got screwed over by MPEG. But, um, uh, this is the, this is the Model T. This is the, um, this is the beginning of the future of VR. We've had VR for a long time, but this is, this Go right here, this guy right here is the future. Mark, you're going to make so much money off of this. It ain't even funny anymore. And I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to make money off of this because I'm going to put my money in your stock. And I hate the stock market. I think the stock market is a mirror for an anorexic. The corporations are the anorexics. Uh, they look at the mirror and they judge themselves and the, 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 the success of their company by what it, their stock says. They're anorexics. But, Mark, you're not. Mark, you are a, a, um, you are a free thinker just the way as I am. And Jeff, Jeff, you are too. And I, I understand that um, you have from the beginning, you know business how to do business you know the future you've seen it in the um, the um, 
you, your cloud computing platform wouldn't be anything without the Amazon cloud. Um, Mark, the, uh, there's another guy, another Mark, Mark Shuttleworth. Um, you know what we're doing and with these computers. You understand open source. Um, all you guys out there are really are really good thinkers. Bill Gates would be a good thinker uh, had he not been involved with m money changed Bill Gates. I don't, I don't know what to think of Bill Gates if if he's or if he's a visionary or what. Um, he's an opportunist. He's always been an opportunist, and uh, his endeavors to um, to um, uh, eradicate AIDS. Um, I hope he's feeling good because he destroyed so many corporate corporations um, or not corporations, companies, little mom and pops, just like Walmart does all the time. It, this is, it's a dog eat dog world. So I understand that. But um, um, there's, the the when the microcomputer company companies came about, there was co competition. There was fruitful, but uh, Microsoft comes into an industry. Every all the software developers say we're fucked. You know, Microsoft is here. They are going to ruin us. I'll tell you of an industry that Microsoft ruined. Uh, Microsoft. Do you remember Telemed at uh, Los Alamos, New Mexico, the lab? Telemed? You remember Telemed? You were working with Telemed? What was your position at Telemed? Was it to push the technology? Or was it to um, evangelize, uh, use the, your evangelism techniques and sales abilities to, to uh, and, and your, your um, level of, of distraction? You love to distract. When you come into any kind of organization panel, any any group of thinkers, uh, any think tank, you Microsoft, this is what you do. You distract. And why do you distract? Because you've got something else on the back burner. And you distract until, until your technology comes around. You take them. You flank them. I know about flanking. I play 3D games all the time. You flank and you come from behind. And that's what you do, you did with Telemed. You ruined Telemed. It was by the government to create a new way of dealing with patient records. We could have had so much uh, less money spent on, on health care and so much more money in actually treating patients. But because of you and because of your greed, because you are bloodthirsty, blood uh, greedy bastards that you are, Microsoft, you are. Um, you came along and said, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna get medical medical manager. We're gonna get XL seven. Why are XL? I mean, what not XL seven? XML, uh, HL seven, uh, health level seven, bars and pipes. You." Pop the bars you know, all day long. Uh, you you, you uh, deal with the bars all day long, and you hop the bars at night because you, it drives you up the wall. This stupid HL7 format, uh, XML. Um, why does Microsoft support XML? Um, because it can be perverted. Because it uh, it's very easy to hide. Um, hide in a data format. It's very difficult to hide in an abstract object extraction uh, and enter a, a abstracted simplified interface. It is hard to hide in a simplified interface. Whenever you have a um, whenever you have uh, levels of abstraction in an interface, a level one, a level two, and a level three um, with more detail, you, you must have the first. You must have the base object design, um, the base level interface. Um, otherwise, you lose incompatibility. Microsoft don't give a damn about that. 
All they care about is whether you're going to get their software to work with that object. Um, and so therefore they'll pervert it. And how they pervert it, they don't pervert the object interface, they pervert the file format that is that the objects get stored in between coming from point A to point B. They saw in telemed, they saw the future of healthcare. And because the greedy bastards they are, they couldn't deal with it. And uh, they just said, uh, this is not Excel. This is in our technologies. Um, we don't have anything to answer this. Uh, well, we'll just sit in this sector. Uh, we want to make the, we want to sell Excel. We don't want, we want people to be using paper records in healthcare. We don't want them to be using uh, encrypted um, patient records and transferring them. And the government the whole time says, okay, this HIPAA regulation, the whole purpose of this HIPAA regulation, keep data out of the hands of the insurance company so that they can't make decisions upon your healthcare based upon, I mean, uh, on your payment of healthcare based upon your healthcare. Um, they can't see that if you're an HIV patient, uh, that you're an HIV, HIV patient. They can't have access to that information. So um, there's two ways that we can protect it. We can um, put in place a uh, regulation that all data passed between clinic and pa patients and clinics, uh, or I mean between clinic and clinic, is passed um, by patients. They they take responsibility. They do they do the paper moving. They are the transport method. They take their records, put them in their hands, take them to the other doctors, deliver them, and that's how we do a lot of our transfer of healthcare information. And most doctors um, can't deal with that um, process. They require you to fill in forms. And so we're forever filling in forms, bureaucracy out the fucking wazoo, okay? And why? Because of Microsoft's greed, he bastards, okay? If we had telemed, you know how telemed works? Uh, they have this PIDs format, and uh, what it does is it uses biometric information, uh, address information, ID9s, um, ID9 is address information, names, uh, telephone numbers, zip code, uh, anything that's not healthcare. Um, then they might use blood type. They might use retinal scans. They might use uh, tattoos on the arms uh, to as part of the identification process. It's a fuzzy logic way of correlating the identity of you uh, to your healthcare record, and if they can transfer your personal information or your your identity uh, uh, to, from one doctor to another doctor, that doctor can say, yes, I've got this patient here because I recognize it. He, he correlates finally with what I've got in what I've got in my records. And so therefore those records are correlated. And instead of passing the records over, I'll just say, Yes, he is the same guy. Here is my number. I'll take your number. I'll take, we'll correlate our information and we'll say it's the same. And then if anybody needs to get it, we will encrypt it and send it over to them. And we, uh, and we don't have to deal with middleman tax because we will use some sort of certificate authority to guarantee that uh, when it gets to the other end, it uh, passed through the right, right uh, um, verification and stuff. Microsoft didn't do shit with this. They didn't have any involvement. They were there to distract and to obfuscate and to run. And I will never forget Microsoft. God damn me. I will never forgive Microsoft for what they did. Never. You will never see the end of me, Microsoft. Now, I will 
accept your alt VR, uh, your alt space VR, as uh, a potential great thing if it's innovative. Yeah, but still, you're Microsoft. You're going to need to rebrand before I can even get to the point where I get distracted from the fact of what you are. You are Microsoft. You are the assimilators. You are the the evil guys from um, Star Trek. You know the 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 Borg. You are the Borg, and uh, forever will be the Borg in my book. Um, and even the Borgs are better than you because uh, they at least try to um, correlate uh, patient information. They try to assimilate uh, organisms and figure out uh, the relationships between the organisms and fix the, the things that needed fixing. Um, you did nothing for us, Microsoft. Um, and Microsoft, the only reason why uh, you've got Windows here and the PC is because of Compaq. It's, it's just luck. You're just lucky. And you're lucky that uh, IBM uh, didn't ruin, the, we're all lucky that the IBM didn't ruin the industry. But I don't, I don't, uh, I don't envy you at all. I, I don't think your technology, I see through it. I see that all these applications you got in your windows here, look, I got Linux down there. The only reason why I'm using Windows is because I'm forced to. Um, your applications are, um, are, let me see, your applications have shared, have no shared libraries in them. Uh, maybe they do a little bit, but they're C++ redistributables that have to be put in each application. When they install, they install the same library, just a little bit different version for every application. Each application has a different version of the C++ redistributable. Um, and because of that, you've got so many security holes in your software because each one of those libraries have got a security hole in them. Um, there's no shared libraries in, in, well, maybe there is, but there isn't much. And if it, if it weren't for the way that they distribute their software the way they have, Wine for Linux wouldn't work the way it does, and it can. Is uh, It basically translates all the calls to uh, from the Windows programs into the operating system into Linux calls. And that's how Wine works, how, how you can run a Windows program on Linux without a copy of Windows. And Microsoft can't do a damn thing about it. I This is a reason why I am forever a fan of the freeware movement, the GPL movement. And it will forever be exalting them above what you are because you destroy and you've always destroyed and when you've not destroyed you've gone off with Bill Gates and his little his little thing to help the AIDS to basically it is him saying look I'm a great guy I'm I'm really a great guy you you want to be my friend because look what I'm doing for people in Africa I put all my money in. it was the best thing that I ever did well what were you doing before Bill who are you? Are you that guy or this guy? And, uh, and you know, uh, you know, you're the, you're the Randian guy, aren't you? Do, you? do you believe in God? I don't think so. Um, I, I struggle with mine. No, I don't. Actually, I do know God exists for 100% sure. I'm a demon. Um, I've come to the realization that I am a demon. And the demons know God exists for absolute certainty. And uh, so, I am the 
daemon. I am the Unix daemon, the Linux daemon. I am the fire beneath your ass. I am the force driving you to be better because you can't be what you were. You must be better than open source. You must be better than freeware. You must be better than the GPL because the GPL will always be there. It'll always be a competitor. There's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is sandbox people in and uh, protect them from the malicious code that exists in the universe. But uh, and, and unless people are in not in those walled gardens, um, you're not going to make any money. And if the consumers just come to the realization that they need to know more about um, things, they're going to have to know the details. They're, they're, they're going to not have an easy way to make money as people. They have to do services. Um, they, uh, they have to be involved with the details of stuff. We need VR to do that. To, to get to understand the detail, to get back to the detail, we need VR. And um, there's an elephant in the room that everybody will talk about, porn. Yeah, porn's there. Porn, the oldest, what's the oldest um, profession? Yeah, it's always going to be there. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and it's... It's scary, and it's scary, I'd say this more for the children. This is scary to, to think that the children can have access to that stuff because that stuff is like going to a strip club, okay? Um, and there's no child lock on this thing. Mark isn't even thinking about this. There's no child lock on this thing. A kid could pick it up and have... An experience, an adult experience, and be forever traumatized from that. Okay, it could be very traumatic. Okay, um, some people don't think it. It can be traumatic. It is traumatic. Um, it depends on on. Um, it depends on what you know. Or it can be traumatic. Uh, what you're. What you're able to filter out. Your brain is able to filter out. Some people can't. Um, this needs a child lock. It needs supervision um, to prevent children from getting access to that stuff. And if you go to Allspace VR, you pretty much see children all the time. They're all in your face. They're just jumping around you. Their parents don't give a shit. You know? And, uh, I'm sure there, maybe there are some, some, some FBI agents are in there. Maybe there are. I don't know, but um, it's scary to me to think that um, Microsoft is not even aware of this is going on, or if they are, I don't know. Um, there needs to be more supervision and um, control over this of that aspect of the VR social experience. Um, anyhow, um, ton bottom line, you need to get into, you need to get into uh, Blender and make it 3D uh, VR uh, accessible. That was how I started this entire video. It went in all places, like every video I make. It goes in all places because I just, my brain is, um, is free associations galore. And I free associate everything. This is my, my sister-in-law says I do this. You're a free association dumbass you know <laughs> she doesn't say that she's a christian but uh she would say that i'm into free association of everything so um sorry for the for the long video but uh the future of blender is vr the future of communications vr the future of news is vr um 
you cannot uh, be thought cell phone videos were convincing. VR is much more convincing than any cell phone video will ever be. Um, things are more likely to go viral in VR than they are in 2D. Um, and I believe that uh, this is the future and we need to be on it, uh, everybody. And in VR, you know, every generation br brings along a DIY culture. Um, in the 70s, the DIY culture was the disco age, uh, get on the dance floor and dance. Um, early 70s, the DIY was punk, get up on stage and sing. Um, in the uh, 90s, the DIY uh, culture was get on the internet and be a magazine, a newspaper, be a, 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 a writer. Um, be a, a be a, an artist, uh, a, a movie maker, and the, the internet unlocked a whole bunch of those. And the DIY culture here now is get up on VR and be you. And present yourself. What do you do? What What do you like to do? Um, do it. That's what VR is about. And uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it. I am telling you that you better get your VR act together. Get it. Get it in your life. Use it. Evangelize with it. Evangelize you what you understand about the world get people to understand you, okay? And this was made part by a Lenovo Mirage camera. It's not the, th I'll show you what this sucker looks like. Uh, I've got a mirror, um, I got a mirror on the wall. There's one right there. Um, Let's look at you, what you look like. There you are. There you are. You're that little camera up there. That's what I've been using for my, for my stereo imagery. And it's got a phenomenal battery life. And it has, it, uh, it's been taking this all this time. The small lithium ion battery. Things not overheating all that much. And it's been transmitting to my iPad, and I, I do the recording from that. So, and what I'm doing over here, if you want to know, is I'm downloading uh, YouTube videos, and I'm going to load them up into a headset. I just bought, uh, I just bought um, two 64 gigabyte Go's um, from Best Buy, which is where you want to get them, because... Uh, they need to know that uh, this technology is going to be their number one, and everything they've got is toast. Um, they they maybe thought they were going to sell LCD TVs. They maybe thought they were going to sell Sony Playstations. They maybe thought they were going to sell iPads. They were going to sell cell phones. They were going to sell um, Google um, Home stuff. Um, they're selling VR. And they're hiding it in a cabinet in uh, in Grapevine, Texas. They got a little cabinet. It's off to the side. It's on the on the um, right side of the store as you're coming in. Um, it's hidden. They're hiding their Oculus Go's because they're scared shitless that that uh, somebody comes in for that they're not going to buy anything else in the store. And they're damn right they're not going to buy any more in the store. They're just going to buy Oculus Go's from here on out. The Oculus Go is the electric car. You know, who killed the electric car? Um, the Oculus Go, um, if Mark Zuckerberg isn't really believing in it, which I think he is believing in it, um, it is the game changer. It will ruin all the other um, entertainment uh, sources. Um, 
2D uh, entertainment's gone. 3D is the future. VR killed the movie star. VR killed the two-dimensional format. Th to, to, the, the wave of the future is the 3D. VR killed the cinematographer. The new cinematographer is in VR. The new cinematographer is you. You are the cinematographer. You're the only cinematographer. You're the only the guy who can be the cinematographer. Um, that you are. You have to understand that, what that means. Um, your experience is unique. And nobody is going to be able to do you like you do you. So, get yourself one of these cameras and go and, and tell your story. That's how... Because there is a huge, vast array, uh, a vast group of people desperate for VR content. And there's nobody there to present it but guys like me who will exploit this until you're sick of seeing my face. So that's what I'll be doing. And crazy or not, uh, here I come. And ton, yes, ton again. Uh, if you're still watching this, yes. You gotta dump that 2D interface and go for the 3D. You gotta you gotta make VR your your end uh effect. Uh 2D animation's dead. 3D is the future. 3D VR is the future. 3D is dead. 3D VR is the future. Surround 360, 180. It's the future. 2D is dead. Um, now, Blender can still be about 2D. And the great thing about uh, Blender is that since it's open source, it can be about everything, uh, 2D or 3D. But you're really going to want to be get that VR in there. And uh, you want some VR abstraction. You want to abstract it away from anybody's particular headset. Um, we need this electric car running on electricity, not on gas, on some specific resource. We want it running on um, a, a, a raw electric matrix um, coming from a combination of fuel resources so that um, whoever makes the cheapest resource wins. Um, whoever or your, whoever you want to selectively be the, the resource wins. Um, you can choose to make solar your resource because of the grid. Um, but you, you have to keep in mind that what goes on the grid, uh, whenever you're talking about electric cars, what goes on the grid um, is everything. It's the stuff you disagree with as well as the stuff you agree with. It's all there. In VR, um, it's all there. The stuff you agree with, the stuff you disagree with, it's all going to be there. Because it is the new Matrix. Like the Matrix, the movie. See, my free association of mind, God, look at that. It's just free associative all over the place. Um, some movies that I would suggest, to, if you're looking for some entertainment in the TV realm, there's still something there. Um, that I really believe are good and you can experience it in a 3D realm inside of a little movie theater or, or uh, Oculus Go's got a theater that's uh, themed, a moon theme. You're on the moon watching a projection and you, Earth is off in the distance. It's great. Um, yeah. Um, I've got dry lips. Um, one movie to see is Brainstorm. It was Natalie Wood's last movie. Um, but that shouldn't be a reason to not watch it. The, it is forever um, my most favorite VR movie. Uh, it was VR before VR even 
before anybody was coining the term VR. It is about the idea of being able to transmit thoughts from one person to another and being able to uh, use that for education for and, and it exploits everything that that could be and how it could be um, used. 